creating data tables in React is probably one of the most problematic tasks that you can get if you are doing it from scratch. There are a bunch of libraries that you can use, for example I used Material UI from this list and Undesign and they are really great, but the one that is the easiest and the fastest solution is not even on this list. If you are following me you probably know that I love ShedCN. And with this example, I'm going to show you why ShedCN is so awesome. So we are inside the ShedCN documentation in data table component. And as we can see, it's a powerful table and data grids built using 10 stack table. So let's see what are we actually getting inside of this component. So here we have a table full of some data. In our case, it's some emails with amount of money, some payments. And we have first thing filtering so we can here type in ken for example and we are getting this ken99 at yahoo email then we have here drop down of all the columns so we can filter it out we can exclude email from our columns and return it back then we have here sorting by emails you can see that we have this icon up and down so we can sort it by emails here we have our drop down of all the actions and we can even select entire rows or deselect and select them all. And the last thing is we have pagination working inside of this component. Best thing about it is that it's really easy to implement and it is receiving data externally outside of the component. And it is using 10 stack table. There are a lot of benefits from using 10 stack table. For example, it's extremely lightweight. All other libraries are around 300, 400 kilobytes and this one is only 10 to 15. And here you can see all the features that we were talking about, that we were testing from here. What are we going to get from our data table component? And we can start with the installation. I have here latest Next.js application up and running. We can go to localhost and here we can see it. So now what we need to do is to install and initialize ShedCN library. So if you already have this or you know how to do it, you can skip until the next chapter. So we are going here inside the documentation, then we are going to installation, Next.js and we are initializing ShedCN with this command. So I'm putting it inside of my terminal. I'm choosing default, slate, and yes, everything just enter, enter, enter. And we have our ShedCN initialized. And just a couple more steps are needed for ShedCN. So we need to put this class name inside of our layout file. So I'm opening the layout. And here, instead of this class name, we are putting everything from ShedCN documentation. And we are going to implement in the same manner like they, this font sans like this and we are importing cn from libutils that one is created when we initialized our shed cn with that command and now we have that one set and last thing is to put that font inside of our tailwind configuration so i'm going to tailwind config tailwind here it is and here under extend i'm putting the font family and i'm importing it here on the top of our file and I'm just going to quickly fix it to import instead of require and now our ShedCN is ready and we can start installing our components. So now we can close this page and we can return here and start adding everything that is needed for our data table. So first thing we are adding is the table component, that one is done, then we need to install 10 stack react table i'm going to use pmpm so adding that dependency that we need and that one should be installed quickly i have a bunch of these warnings i have to check out what is happening okay so we installed the 10 stack react table and now we can move to prerequisites so here we can see how is our data going to look and that's completely fine with us and this is our project structure so we are going to create payments page, then we are going to have columns.tsx, data table.tsx and page.tsx. So here we can see that columns that's going to be a client component and there we are going to have our column definitions. 
data table also client component for data table component and page which is going to be a server component so there we can fetch all the data and do all the server stuff and we are going to send that data to our data table.tsx so let's start let's first create that payments page so here inside of our app i'm creating a new folder and i'm calling it payments so inside we have columns dot tsx then we have our page dot tsx and the third one is i think data table yes dot tsx also data table dot tsx there it is and now we can copy our first version of columns so i'm copying the entire columns dot tsx and i'm pasting it here inside of our columns i'm going to close all other files so we can follow this one better so here as you can see we are creating our payment type where we have id amount status and email and that's exactly what we had in the beginning in that table that is a demo there and we are defining our columns and you can see that we are using column definition from 10 stack react table now next thing that we need to do is to put everything inside of our data table component so i'm again doing the copy pasting and i'm pasting everything inside the data table.tsx and here you can see a lot more things are happening so we are here importing our shed cn table a component and we are receiving inside the data table component we are receiving our props which is columns and our data and then here we are creating the table with use react table which is coming from 10 stack react table and after that we are just simply rendering this 10 stack table together in a hybrid way with shad cn table so we are using the table and table headers and all the components from shad cn and we are putting inside our created table from use react table and this one should already be displayed when we just copy and paste our last thing and that's the page so we need to use this component inside of our page and that is the third thing that we are going to do so i'm going to copy paste entire page here and here it is and now when we go in our i need to just restart the whenever we install shed cn we need to restart our next.js application and here we can see that it's working and now when i go to payments we see that we already have our data table so this is maybe already enough for you maybe you just need to display the data inside your project and next thing that we need to do is to add additional features for our table so we have all those filterings sorting then pagination and selecting rows and stuff like that let's just see on our page what is actually happening so page is a server component and we can sort it like this so server component is first here and as we can see we are fetching the data from our let's say this is some server or something or api like they say here and we are awaiting it inside of our server component and we are just giving it to our data table and here also we are taking columns from our columns inside here and we are putting it also inside the data table as a prop so let's move to the next feature let's see what is next so first thing is cell formatting so what are we doing here is that we are formatting the amount cell to display the dollar amount and we are aligning the cell to the right and let's see how we're we doing that so inside the columns I'm going to copy this entire thingy from here so our header and cell and inside of our columns here i'm just going to copy and paste it so let's see where is it going it's inside the columns so under the accessor key and that's for our columns amount and here it is and let's check out how is it looking now so now here we have our amount always in the dollar format so we have the dollar sign in front and we have dot zero zero 
So that is really awesome that we can do it from the beginning and whatever amount comes in here, it is going to format in the right way. Then next thing that we have is the row actions. So here we are adding row actions to our table and we are using a dropdown component to do this. So we need to install dropdown and button components. I'm going to copy this entire thing and put it in our imports here. So we can see that we need to add this one. Let's add that one quickly. So here we are adding our button and we are also adding the drop down menu, drop down menu like this. So now we shouldn't have a problem here anymore. Let's see, disappear, say I. Okay, good. And now we can copy this entire actions object here and we are putting it inside of our array here. So let's see what we have now. So here we have our three dots and when I click on it, we have our actions to copy payment ID, view customer, view payment details, etc. So it's really easy to dynamically add uh, actions drop down to whatever table you have. Let's see what is next. So now we have pagination. And if you worked with pagination before, you know how complicated it can be, but check this one out. So we are adding here in data table the pagination row model from 10 stack react table then we are just adding it here when we are creating our table and we are just creating the controls inside of our ui and that's all so i'm adding this entire div below of our table here and i'm just here going to create a new div and let's see how does it look and i broke something okay let's see maybe oh we don't have a button i need to import the button and now we have pagination below our table and it is working next feature is sorting and that one is also really easy so here we are importing inside of our data table to import the react from react then we have our sorting state that one is also inside the 10 stack react table and get sorted row model so we are using basically 10 stack for everything here for all the features and here we are creating a new use state for sorting and set store sorting so we are going to put that one let's say here and we are adding it to our table And that one is here. We just need to move this one up. It needs to be declared before using it. And now we need to make a header cell sortable. So we are adding arrow up down from Lucid React, which we already have implemented together with ShedCN. And we are adding a header for our email where we are basically adding this arrow up down and on click we are doing the toggle sorting so let's see how that one works so i'm adding it to where is that one that one is in the columns yes so i'm adding it here inside of our email instead of this header i'm adding this header and this arrow up down is here inside of our columns and now if we go to our table here we have a button with this icon and when we click it it's going to sort we just need to add a couple more of data to test it out so inside of our page we have our data i'm just going to copy paste a couple of objects so we can test it out i'm just changing the ids a little bit so we have different ids and the amounts also 200 here we can say 10 and here maybe 350 250 and we are going to change these emails to a b c and d 
and also pending success and heal here we can say failure and let's check it out now let's just see what is failed it's not failure okay let's see how does it look i'm refreshing and here i'm pressing the email and now we can see that it is sorted from a b c d m so that is working perfectly let's move on next thing that we have is filtering and that one is also using 10 stack react table so we are adding inside of our data table here the column filter state and get filtered row model and then we need to install also the input and i'm adding it here and i'm going to add it through our terminal so we are doing the mpx cn ui latest add input and that one is done so that one should be good now and next thing is to add the new state for our column filters and that one is also in the data table here so i'm adding it below our sorting state and then we are adding it like this so below our get sorted row model we are adding all of these parameters and here we are adding column filter state which is being used then here with our input so i'm adding that input above of our table here and let's see how does it work so here we have filter emails and if i type b we are getting b if i type c we are getting lot of examples.com but i can type c at so here we have c then we have d and this one also works perfectly awesome let's move on and i think this one is the last and that's the row selection so inside of our columns we are adding again a new component and that's our checkbox so here inside of our terminal we are adding the checkbox component from shed cn and here for our select we are adding entire new object inside of our array and we can just copy this entire thingy from here and put it somewhere inside of our data table so we can put it again here below somewhere let's say here inside where we have our pagination and let's see how does it look so here we have zero of five rows selected and we can select one row and we can see that we have one of five rows selected so we have a checkbox for each row and we can select or deselect and we have this automatically working to select and deselect all and i cannot explain how great this is using this library for this one because this is always painful to create these selects and deselects inside the data tables and that's it this is our shed cn table together with 10 stack react table up and working and now what i would do is i would create here inside the components a new folder called features and i would put this data table inside and we can reuse it wherever we want we just need to have like on our page different type of data and also different type of columns and based on that our data table is going to be totally dynamic and we can reuse it for every piece of data that we have and that we need inside of our projects so you can potentially create this only once and just reuse it on all of projects that you are working on this video was requested on our discord channel specifically from nice core he requested a video for shatsian ui data table together with 10 stack because that's now trendy and i hope this was helpful and if you want to see more content like this join the horde subscribe to this channel and you have the invitation for the discord channel in the description below